Hi, and welcome back to The Coach, where we talk all things Namibian sports. Now, we continue to discuss the success stories and the failures and where African sport and Namibian sport is going. I am Script, and I am joined by a special guest from the world of sport. Today, I am joined by Paul the Prince, who is a Zambian-born musician, TV and radio personality, and he's a huge football fan, Real Madrid and Man United in particular. He's also a football commentator and a gamer. We've had our fair share of spats on FIFA, and we'll dive into that a little bit later on. Paul, welcome hey. to the coach. Thank you for having me, man. I love the setup. Yeah, well, welcome there. to the building. It's, <laughs> it's the coach, man. Um, you know, Jose Mourinho is, is, is one of my, my favorite uh, personalities in the world of sports, so the coach is, is just fitting, I guess, for this one. Exactly. I'm actually a big fan of Jose Mourinho as well. Yeah, yeah. so I always used to like how we talk to the media. Mm. Now, before speaking of media, before we get into football in itself, let's talk about you. You're a, a football commentator. Mm. We saw you on the Super Sports. We saw you in South Africa doing the big thing. <laughs> you know, I switch on DSTV and there's my friend. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit weird. Now, usually people who are commentators are not the best footballers. It's changing as, as of late, you know, Thierry Henry, uh, the likes of Gary Neville, Jamie Carragher. Yeah. Um, I don't know if people consider him a good player or not, but uh, the ties are changing, but typically they're not good players. Did you ever play? I did play, um, and I stopped playing because I almost got injured, you know, and I've, I've, uh, by the time I started playing football, mm -hmm. A lot of people take it way too seriously, you know, and mm. I thought this doesn't really pay my bills, so let yeah. me not. Uh, but I love football. I've loved football for a long time, you know, playing on the ground as kids. Always yeah. we started from there. And then also during school time, we would uh, obviously do the 11 aside. And I love playing. I used to love playing on the wing because I'm actually very athletic. I love running mm. up and down. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's the position I actually used to like play. Interesting. Uh, that, that's not one I, I would have thought maybe a, a, a striker. Right yeah, but for my size, uh, I would have to be like a small striker, like maybe Chicharito, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. not, I'm not that tall. Yeah. So if you cross the ball to me and I'm against a tall defender, mm. I might not win that, that race. So yeah. I think I'd rather be the one to supply, you know, and maybe contributing a few goals here yeah. and there. Yeah. Now, do you think, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a TV personality, radio personality, as, a, as an MC, as a DJ, you've, you know, seen quite a lot of success? Do you think, had you stayed with football, do you think you would have uh, been quite the player? No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think it's, it's very hard to break out from the African scene and then find yourself applying a trade mm -hmm. in the leagues that we like to watch, mm -hmm. La Liga, Serie A, most especially Premier League. You know, I think uh, the foundations of, of football mm -hmm. in Africa have not really made enough strides for players to find themselves over there. Yeah. You know, so I would be very ambitious to say, yeah, I was probably going to be playing alongside Marcus Rashford yeah. at this point, but I don't yeah. think so. Um, maybe if I was that side, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. you find yourself by luck mm. in the UK or in Italy or in Spain, and then you just keep developing your talent through the academies, maybe. Mm -hmm. But I think from the, from the place that I've been, um, I'm happy with what I'm doing so far. Yeah. I mean, I love watching sport, uh, doing content on it. Yeah, yeah it's my thing. Now, now, allow me to tug on the heartstrings a little bit. Manchester United. I knew we were going to talk about Manchester United today. <laughs> Football club. I mean, who isn't talking about Manchester United? Everybody. They love talking about Manchester United. It's Listen, crazy. You know, you know what it is? And this is just a personal opinion. I think people love speaking on Manchester United and they have a strong opinion on them because of the fans, not necessarily the team. I think most rival fans of Manchester United actually admire the team. Uh, over the years, you know, the success that they've seen, yeah. Manchester United fans have uh, been a little bit arrogant. But I don't think, I don't really think it's because of the fans. I mm -hmm. think it's because of the success that Manchester United has had, I think, in that spell that uh, Ferguson came in and since he got the class of 92. Yeah. It changed the course of football history. I mean, no team was winning titles as, you know, consistently as mm -hmm. Manchester United. And if you look at the number of titles that Ferguson won and mm -hmm. the teams that he built over the years, whether one player goes, he still managed to find somebody else. Yeah. Um, so that's the reason why it's become one of the biggest brands in football. Mm. I mean, without even winning trophies, even the revenue they make. So I understand why people always talk about Manchester United, may not just because of the fans, but because they've probably got the largest fan base in football across the world. True. Yeah, so that's why it's always a topic. I, I mean, even when the Ten Hag news broke, it's something that I was seeing on Sky Sports every day. While other teams are, are really having a lot of success on the field and maybe even off it, you don't see as much news about them. But anything that's got Manchester United yeah. on it is good for, you know, yeah. Obviously, I think, I think they're, they're held to a different uh, standard yeah. because of what Ferguson has, has 
uh, brought to football uh, through Manchester United. Now, you mentioned the success and and um, we'll get into the Fergie time later yeah, we'll on. We'll get into the failures <laughs> now. <laughs> Where did it go wrong, um, in your opinion, as a United fan? I think that what the succession plan was not, was not put in place. Mm. That's what I see. I think for me the succession plan was a bit quick. I think we were shocked. Like we knew a time was going to come where Ferguson was going to say, I've had enough. It, because, you know, Ferguson wanted to retire before City actually won the league. Mm -hmm. That season that we lost it on goal defense, he actually wanted to retire that season. Mm. But the fact that City won it in those circumstances, he said, okay, hold up. I'm going to go get Robin Van Persie and then we're going to win. The, and, you know, I love the confidence. I used to love the confidence of that man. Because Chelsea tried, but we still came back and won three titles again. And, mm. You know, it was, you know, he had the confidence to say, I'm going to do this again. And mm -hmm. when he went to get Van Persie, I never thought he was going to win it yeah. in that fashion. Yeah. I just love the way he went out, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, and said, you know what, I've done my part. Mm -hmm. And then he brought in David Moyes and saying, get behind your manager. But now that I think about it, we probably went about it the wrong way in firing David Moyes so quickly because I think the board was under pressure and saying, this man is not getting results, he's not Manchester United yeah. standard. But if you look at what he's done with West Ham, yeah. with the time he's been given, because this is second spell as well at West Ham. The yeah. first time he went there, he also didn't do as well. But that's why it pays to be patient. We didn't really have the patience. The fans wanted the success back because we just won the league, mm -hmm. the 2012-2013 the season. And you're thinking, you know what, we want another one, we want another one. Where's the trophies? Where are the mm -hmm. trophies? These coaches that you've given us mm -hmm. are not bringing the quality. Mm -hmm. So I think the plan and the impatience from the fans is something that really killed the Manchester United brand. So what they started doing now, from what I see as a fan, yeah. trying to get the big names to sign. You see, we're linked to some of the biggest names. I think even Tony Cruz almost signed for United. He even mm. said that himself. Mm. If you look at the players that were linked to it, they're trying to get back those big players mm. so you can get the success quickly. But not all teams do that. You know, most teams look for the perfect fit for a football club and say, yeah. this is what's going to take us forward. Yeah. You do, know? You think, do you think the, the, the patience is a bit outdated in, in football? Because if you look at the modern day game, um, I mean, with Manchester City, it's a, it's a different case because they didn't have to be as patient with Pep Guardiola. The results, yeah. results came quickly. Um, but everywhere else, it, it, it almost doesn't work anymore in the modern game. I mean, Ferguson has been at United a, a good almost three decades. Um, or is it two, good three, 27 years? Yeah, about 27 years. It's 27 years. Yeah, and, and football back in the day, you had managers who belonged to a club. And uh, everyone's a mercenary these days in the world of football. So uh, with, uh, with Ten Hag coming in, um, do you think the glory days will come back with patience or with results? I think both. I mean, if you look at, now what, when we come back to the point of patience, if you look at the league tables, you know, the, the thing is people are praising Liverpool so much right now, but we forget very quickly as football fans. You know, there's a time they were not almost even qualifying Champions. for the Champions League. If that Alisson header didn't go in against West Brom, mm. they were not going to play Champions League in the season that they won it. Mm. You see how fortunes in football turn around so quickly. So, Jurgen Klopp was given time. You know, this is the project I want to make. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this kind of player, you know. And we could see what he wanted to build. But in the first, we, we didn't see it in the mm -hmm. first season. Like, mm -hmm. ah, it's just another coach. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just, you know. But when he stayed there for two, three seasons, you start to see exactly what's going on. You get, to use, you get used to the brand. You get used to the players. You get used to everything around you. And then he's competing for the highest honors. Mm -hmm. So it always comes with the people and the confidence that they have in saying, look, let's give this guy time. And, this is, and the fans were patient. I mm -hmm. think Liverpool fans were used to it. Liverpool were not even playing finals, man. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. They were not even, like, you're not even finding an FA Cup final. Yeah. That's and how bad it was at Liverpool. The running joke was that it's been 30 years since exactly. uh, you, since you won, won a league, league title. title. So you see that. They had, they had no, no conversation, no voice in the world of football yeah. and, and Premier League in particular. So, so bring, I, bring I that you. back to my picture in terms of Manchester United. It's not impossible because that's how football is. You go up now, you go down. That's how it is because it always depends on who has the best run of form in that time, who's got the best team to compete, who's got mm -hmm. you know, the best structure in the club as mm -hmm. well to compete. So for United, it's not late because what saves them as well? Is the brand that they are. Most players can still play for United even if we don't offer you Champions League football right now. Mm. Some people just love the club. They're always fans when watching it. They mm. said, I started playing football because I watched Ryan Giggs mm. and, you know, the likes of Paul Scores and I want to represent this club. And for me, bringing in Ten Hag is something that's exciting for me. I know we've said a lot about coaches that have come. We've had Louis van Gaal. <laughs> we've had, you know, Jose Mourinho as well who's done things at other Ole clubs. Ole Gunnar. Ole Gunnar didn't have a CV. Um, <laughs> you know, but he did it well. Recommend, word of mouth, recommendation. Yeah, but as a legend of the club, we can't say he didn't do well. Because if you look at some of the, some of the, the results that he got, 
we actually finished second. And this is not a long ago. This is the last season. Yeah. <laughs> you see that? Yeah. But how quickly we forget at fa as fans in how when things have gone sour now, mm -hmm. you want the results back again quickly. But I think the biggest mistake for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, before I get back to Ten Hag, is yeah. I think the players that he retained, Cavani, and then you want to sign, I'm not saying Cristiano Ronaldo is a bad signing, because yeah. he's turned out to be the savior of the season. Yes. yes. <laughs> really, without that guy and David De Gea, if you look at both sides, we don't even have the spine in the club, but those two players have actually mm -hmm. held it down. Mm -hmm. But you can't rely on 33, 37-year-old players to carry you through a season. Mm -hmm. And it's been a season mixed, mixed with controversy. You know, We don't want to talk about the Mason Greenwood situation yeah. as well. Yeah. We've lost players. And then at that time, Martial had already signed to go to Sevilla. Mm -hmm. You see, and then um, Donny van der Beek already said, I'm going to Everton. And now when you look at our midfield, it is so plain, but we have quality players playing their trade somewhere else. Yeah. So I think those mistakes are going to be um, sorted. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen Eric Ten Hag. You know what's funny is that uh, every time somebody's name is, is mentioned, I looked at the options we had and I said, Mauricio Pochettino, um, good coach, but I think I don't... No, he is, he's a good coach. I, I think he lacks on the CV. No, but he's a good coach. He's a very good coach. If you look at the way Spurs played, especially in the final seasons of his Champions tenure. Champions League. Champions League, you yeah. see that. It's, he really is a good coach. Yeah. Dali Ali was playing some of the best football of his life. Ever since he left, it went downhill for him. But then I looked at Ten Hag. There's always people who've got something to prove. You know? I think he's got something to prove. Not, he doesn't have the biggest CV. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's won three league titles in a row, but that's the Dutch league. Yeah. But he's coming to a team where if you're going to give him the backing, and the way he loves working with young players, I think I was discussing this with you before I was outside. Yeah. For me, I love young players because if you look at Arsenal and the resurgence mm -hmm. right now for top four, mm -hmm. it's only young players. The only older player in there is probably Granit Xhaka at this point in Lacazette. Everybody else, they've got the youngest starting 11 in the league. That's Even Chelsea true. as well. I mean, uh, your uh, team. Chelsea, Chelsea, when we had the, I say we like I'm in. I'm yeah, by exactly. The club. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but when, when Chelsea had the, the, the transfer ban, yeah. it was the academy. Just look got at that. Us into qualification positions for the Champions League, yeah. which we ultimately won. Just look at your team, Rhys James. You got Chaloba. You know, Mount. you got Mason Mount. I think he's the best mid. Okay, no, one of the best one midfielders, the best, yeah. because the best midfielder in the Premier League is Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. hands down. But if you look at the young midfielders in the in the league, there mm -hmm. is nobody bowling like Mason Mount. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nobody. He scored the first goal as well in the game I was seeing last night. Mm -hmm. The guy just has everything. But if you look at young players, they always have something to prove. Mm -hmm. Gallagher, also a young player from Chelsea, but he's playing at Crystal Palace. So I think the youth are the ones that are going to drive this forward. Yeah. There's very few teams out there in the league with older players that are, that are playing like, you know? Like, phenom like Ronaldo, for example. They, only, you don't I think have it's that, only Ronaldo. You don't have those examples. I think there's only Ronaldo if you look at the league. Even no. if you look at the top scorers right now yeah. and look at the age of yeah, the people yeah. that are there, it's, it's only Ronaldo, but yeah. Ronaldo is in a class of his own. Yeah. So I think like when it comes to Ten Hag next season, if he gets to keep maybe Ronaldo and say, mm -hmm. and he brings in some quality forwards, mm -hmm. you know, Nunez is what I want in my mm -hmm. team. But also people have been speaking about not getting Mbappe because you got the money, but I don't think Mbappe is going to come and not play Champions League football. Yes. Because yes, he wants yes. to be competing for the highest honours. Yes. The ship sailed for Erling Haaland to come already because he was going to sign, but we didn't want the release clause. Manchester United didn't want to have a release clause because then your competitors can come and say, Here's your 75 million. We're going yeah. to get the player. Do you think? Do you think you'll regret that? Of course. But yeah. you know the thing about football, there's always somebody else. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and speaking of somebody else, as a United fan, obviously we are not in Manchester. Uh, we are in Vintuk, Namibia. Exactly. But how does it feel to wake up as a Manchester United fan and uh, step outside and see clear blue skies? Manchester City running the show. <laughs> <laughs> I won't we'll get you back one day for this one. Eh? <laughs> um, for me, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a very sour United fan. That's what I like about myself. I actually appreciate good football. I mean, I was just telling you about my, premier, uh, my fantasy team. Yeah. I have my captain as Kevin De Bruyne. I've got friends who play uh, fantasy football with emotion. They always want to have Ronaldo as a captain. You know? For me, I appreciate good talent. There's a time mm -hmm. Salah was in everybody's team. Yes. And when I see City doing what they do now, in fact, it doesn't hurt me so much because the same player with, I'm talking about, Chelsea sold him for 18 million to Wolfsburg. Yes. And that is a decision. That is probably hurting a lot of players, right? I mean, a lot of fans right now. Mohamed Salah. 
And even Mohamed Salah, you see that, like the Chelsea model is, <laughs> I don't know, like they had some of the best players, but at the time they didn't look like him, yeah. you know what I mean? But and we didn't give them time and, and say... And, and, and time is, is, is not a, a luxury everyone has because, uh, exactly. you know, Chelsea at the time, the, the, the team was stacked with Andre Schurler, who was a World Cup winner at the time. Yeah. You had Oscar, who was young as well, but uh, performing. You had yeah. Juan Mata, who was also relatively young, uh, Chelsea Player of the Year two times in a row. You had Eden Hazard. Um, you know, the midfield still had Frank Lampard. Exactly. So no, I understand that. But he was actually not even given game time. When I saw the stats that he played yeah. for Chelsea, he hardly played a game. But that's because of the players that were there then. Yeah. But if you look at what he's doing for City now. Phenomenal. I love, I love City because, I mean, not as a club. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not saying I love City and I yeah. support them. I love we, what they've we, done for We football. won't cut this and in, 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 in edit that part and put yeah, it Yeah, because then isolation. people are going to call me out and say, yo, you're a Man City fan. I'm actually wearing a United jersey under this part. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, so, if you look at the way, uh, I knew it. If you look at the way City is, stru is structured right now, mm -hmm. you know why United won the FA Youth Cup final last night? Against who did they play? Uh, it should be Nottingham Forest, okay. if I'm not mistaken. But the reason why is because the budget for mm -hmm. the youth setup actually increased this season. Mm -hmm. They actually invested more in the youth. Mm -hmm. But City have been doing that for a long time. If you look at their youth academy and the structures that they have in terms of the infrastructure, and even the way players are also given a chance to come on yeah. and showcase their talent, we don't have Luke Farr, Phil Foden, one of the best young players in the... In fact, you know what, you know what Pep Guardiola said? It's actually better than Iniesta. That's what he said. I mean, at his age, I agree. Because if you're gonna if you're gonna compare somebody to someone who won the World Cup the and and like was a serial winner of these trophies with mm -hmm. Pep Guardiola, then that's the highest praise for me. Mm -hmm. So I think City deserve what they're getting now because of the structures and the coach that they have. He's such a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. I love Pep Guardiola. He doesn't sleep. Yeah. I watched this All or Nothing documentary. Yes, yes, yes. I watched the All or Nothing documentary, and the guy had sleepless nights before facing Liverpool. That game that they lost, but the way he thinks about football and what he's done for City, they deserve what they have now. The only mm -hmm. shame for me is that they just aren't able to win the Champions League. And it was even sweeter for me because Real Madrid kicked them out. Yeah. But if, if I tell you the truth, I was watching that game while DJ, and I thought City <laughs> have won this. Because it, it was 79 minutes. And the game was 1-0. And, and they had they had to score two goals. <laughs> and we had to score two goals. <laughs> and I was thinking, has, is Pep going to finally do it? Because this time, if Pep actually went to the final, he was going to win it. For sure. I think they Because have, the way they played this season script, they oh would have They would have edged Liverpool. Um, and not even edged. They would have, I think they would have dominated the yeah, final. Yeah, because the only reason why Liverpool won the Carabao Cup is Kevin De Bruyne was on the bench and all these other guys. But City, I mean, and, Liverpool and, put out the full squad. They had Salah, money, and everybody running around. But City had like a second string team. That's what I'm going to call it because the play, even the goalkeeper who made the errors leading up to the goal. Yes. Did, you see that. I, I can't even Hardy remember his that. name. <laughs> uh, I think it's Zach. I'm oh, sorry. I think I'm going his name now yeah. as well. But you see, so for me, this season has been phenomenal in terms of watching it. But as a United fan, I cancelled it already in November, December. After those losses to Liverpool, Watford, Leicester, you know, there's certain the certain five nil, the two nil. Yeah, the even the even the score lines were absolutely ridiculous. Yes. Because as a United fan, it doesn't matter what season it is. I'm I've never been used to seeing. You know, I was watching the Brighton game, yeah, and you know, for the, like not even for the first time. Nothing. Have you ever felt nothing when you're watching a, a game? I was having a cup of tea, and you, eating you, you, eating you a were sandwich. Watching it like it wasn't even your team. And yeah, and that's how much I've cancelled the season for United. I was literally having tea and. I think I was eating cereal at the time. I can't remember because I was about to go to the catch and, you know, work. But have you truly cancelled it? Uh, do you think the top four chances are, are done and dusted? Of course they are. We've played 37 games, more than anybody else on top there, and we're on 58 points. The only way we would have made it is if we beat Brighton. And then it would have to go down to Spurs losing all the games mm -hmm. and then drawing with Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Because any one of the two that are going to win now are it's going to automatically yeah. qualify. You see yes. that? So that's why the North London derby huge today but if I sit down and I say who's gonna make it for top four it's very hard to pick for me because in as much as Arsenal want it and in going into the Champions mm -hmm. League next season I don't think they have the tools or the budget to mm -hmm. compete with the teams that they're gonna find in there because if we're gonna be honest with each other the person who has the pedigree right now to take any team further is probably Antonio Conte he was also your coach yes, yes but if you look at the way he plays even against the big teams he's made both the coaches sour Pep Guardiola I like him because he actually said it's fine uh, 
They played a good yeah, game. Yeah. We he always says he's honest. we. <laughs> you know, he's honest, yeah. Jurgen Klopp went out and said, you know what? The grass. The grass or <laughs> he plays negative football. But that's football. Chelsea the won the league win. with the same tactics. Back to back. Imagine that. <laughs> Antonio Conte won the league with the same tactics he's implying. I mean employing right now at Spurs. Yeah. And then you're gonna have Jurgen Klopp coming out and say, you want everybody to play football like your team. So let me get this right. Your top four is, is Manchester City, obviously. Uh, yeah. I don't see them losing the, the league. City have already won the league for me because if they win the next game, yeah. it's going to be six points. It's and the goal difference is just out of this world. After Kevin De Bruyne, a masterclass. It's, it's a wrap. For, out me, of this world. for me, I don't see any other team pipping um, City to the tight. I don't think so. Sorry. And Liverpool have got too much to play for now. If they, if they put too much energy in the league, that's already gone. If I was Jurgen Klopp right now, Champions I would even league. start benching. The play, just give it up. I mean, I know mm. they're hoping there's no team that's beating City right yeah, now no. because they've got too much in their arsenal. No. So for there's me, still two it's more C trophies to fight for. for exactly. So for me, it's City, Liverpool. Third is obviously Chelsea because now at least you're back to winning ways. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to your team recently. I don't know. It is now half time and we are off the pitch to listen to the coach and the tactics for when we come back uh, to part two of our conversation on the coach with Paul DePitt. <laughs>